Hey there, once again, it's me, Gia Lasala, and welcome to another episode of Pageant Talks. And we are now in season two. And of course, season two is very, very special. We have another special guest, and she's representing the United States of America at the 2021 Miss Supranational Pageant coming this August. So, um, yeah. Hey, hey there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me. Wait, I haven't introduced you yet, so let us welcome Shivali Patel. Hi, Shivali, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Sorry, I'm so excited. I'm completely interjecting. <laughs> yeah, so Shivali, before we uh, get right into the questions that I prepared, so how are you and how things? how are things going for you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited. I'm moving at full motion, full speed since we're only a month away from internationals, but everything's good. The U.S. is in good weather. Things are finally starting to open back up, so everything's looking up. Yeah, and, and how were you chosen as Miss Supernational USA? So I was planning to compete for this upcoming year. I was going okay. to be a uh, competitor for the 2021 yeah. title. Mm -hmm. But we had preliminaries prior to the COVID. competition. Oh, for, yeah, the competition. Yeah, because yeah. of COVID, just to you know take some precautions of close contact. So we had the interviews, and then we had a few conversations. I got there the week of and uh, learned that Madeline had okay. to step back for some personal reasons, and they mm. needed a girl who was ready to go, and I was ready to go. Oh wow! So <laughs> it sort of just worked out that way. I think every just everything sort of just was divine timing and aligning yeah. for me. Yeah, and I feel like God really appointed and ordained this time for you because He knows your heart that. You know, you're, you have a very sincere heart. And I'm so, so happy that I've met you and used your story. So quick question. Has anyone said to you that you could pass for a Hollywood star or, an, or a pop star? Not yet. Oh, you're making my day. My day is <laughs> starting off really good because of you. Thank you. No, I've never heard that, but that's uh, very flattering. So thank you. And, and have you considered like getting to Hollywood or um doing that sort of stuff yeah so my parents were actually very very big fans of that idea so okay. when i was very young they actually had me move to california I, I took acting lessons okay and i moved to california for three months for pilot season to do mm -hmm. casting calls and auditions mm -hmm. and all the sorts um, I also competed for, well, I'm not sure if comp competed is the right word, but I did do IMTA, which was okay. the International Modeling Talent Association. Mm -hmm. It's a massive competition where all the talent flies in and you get to go for go sees and yeah. all that stuff. So long story short, yes, I have definitely approached the idea. I think it would be wonderful if the opportunity came. I would love to take on a role and be in a film or a series or any of the sorts so yeah and i could actually yeah <laughs> i could actually picture you like you know taking a role of a medical doctor or an artist who wants to make it big in the big apple or something like that <laughs> yes. Yes. yeah so um ideas run wild yeah so i just have like a quick question in my head um now that the U.S. is actually coming back, I mean, coming to full circle with pageantry, that, you know, the U.S. won the Miss Grand International 2020 title, Miss Earth 2020 title, do you feel any kind of good pressure, I hope, of bringing the first ever Miss Supernatural crown to the United States of America? I wouldn't say pressured at all, because I think at the end of the day, it's about being authentic and true to yourself. Right. And I think those women that went and competed, Avina and Lindsay, I think they both mm -hmm. did the same exact thing. They put forward their best foot, and that's exactly what I plan to do as well. So I'm very excited. No bad pressures or vibes of any kind. I'm very, very, very grateful for this opportunity. Okay, great. So... Yeah, that was a very long introduction. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, I just We're here really to want, talk. <laughs> I know, I just really wanted to, you know, to warm things up a bit so that you'd feel cozy. Okay, so Shivali, are you ready for are you ready for the actual interview? I am. I am. Uh, okay, so number one, tell us everything about yourself and what makes you special. Sure. So everything about myself, my identity, uh, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm would be, I was originally, so all the standard stuff, I'm 24, yeah. 
I have a bachelor's in psychology and communications oh. with a minor in bio. Wow. And that is because I was originally, I, I love meeting people and talking to people. So that, that's where the comp comes from. But I was a pre-med student. So I was planning to go into medical school. I was planning to be the doctor that you're saying I could play. <laughs> <laughs> very fitting, very fitting. Yeah, yeah. So I took all of my medical school prerequisites. I was okay. about to take the entrance exam, but I realized I really, really, really wanted to build something of my own too. Okay. Like I was introduced to this idea of entrepreneurship through my uncle and it really clicked with me. So okay. I said, you know what? School's always gonna be there in the future. I can go back and become a doctor. Should yeah. that be the case that, you know, yeah. life takes me. But I, decided to take my passions for serving people and healthcare and kind of combine them to build my own company. So okay. professionally, by profession, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a writer. So I've published a couple of self-help books. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, yeah. I actually, fun fact, I have also published a fiction book, but it's not under my name because mm -hmm. that's not really exactly, it was my first go at it. So it's under a low key name. It's under a <laughs> name, so you will not be finding it and I will not be sharing it. <laughs> but I am an entrepreneur and an author and I'm also a brand evangelist at Helium 10. So I really love kind of doing it all, staying dynamics, getting to experience what life has to offer. And yeah, that's a little bit about my standard identity. But outside of that, I think what makes me special is exactly what makes you special. We're all different, right? We're all a culmination of our experiences and values and beliefs and the people that we were brought up around. So for me, I think it's really about just all of those differences. My experiences and my background is what makes me special. That is really nice. And I just really want to release this word that the Lord has impressed into my heart that I feel like you're going to succeed in whatever you're going to do. You just have to set your heart right into it and be committed. And the dreams that you have are valid. And these are actually from ordained by God. So you just have to like really go for it and push for it. So long as your heart is in the right place and you have the sincerest intention. Absolutely. So, yeah. Because I can you. really see you succeeding, you know. <laughs> oh, thank you. That yeah. means so much. <laughs> and then you sound really intelligent. You have a very, you have a charisma. So I feel like you can convince people to like, um, not manipulate them, but you can actually convince people with your words and um, with uh, with any kind of platform that the Lord will give you in the future. So Mr. Supernational is one. So yeah, number two, I know you have a lot of this. Um, what are your aspirations in life? I have time. You can tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> I also have time today. Okay. Um, but no, I do have many aspirations as anybody would, right? I mean, time is just going and yeah. we all have short-term and long-term goals. But I think at the root of it all, my fundamental aspiration is really to be synonymous with love. Mm -hmm. And that is because I think everything all my moments in life that i've been the happiest or ha hold the fondest memories yeah. have always originated with other people oh, wow. so i would want to in life my overall aspiration would be to be remembered as somebody who gave as somebody who intended her actions with love through love for love yeah and that would be my biggest fundamental aspiration yeah, and there's a verse in the Bible that in order for you to be great, you have to be the one who's serving. And that is really, really good, um, my dear. And um, I'm curious, what triggered this kind of um, fundamental, as you have said, or, or philosophy in life, as you've mentioned? What triggered this? Yeah, so I have a very extensive background in volunteer work. Mm -hmm. My mom uh, encouraged me to start volunteering at the age of 12. Oh, wow. So by the age of like 12, 13, I was volunteering all my time at nursing homes. Oh. And so through nursing homes, I actually had started my own foundation, like my own movement of bringing in teenagers or high schoolers to nursing homes because nursing homes lack yeah. volunteers and those elders need some form of connection because it's so isolated. Right. And so I would go and I would organize events. I would go volunteer my time with them. Then I would go speak with high schools and bring them together. And all of that stuff was very much rooted with people. 
Right. And so I was always talking to people. I was talking to the elders about what their biggest regrets in life were, mm -hmm. what they loved doing, what their fondest moments were. But I was also talking to the high schoolers who were developing into themselves as I was yeah. developing into an adult myself as well. Right, right. And just through all of this, like all of the volunteer work I did with nursing homes, all of the volunteer work I did with the Alzheimer's committee, because I was on the board for, for mm -hmm. Walk to Alzheimer's for several years. Yeah. And then Best Buddies which oh, wow. has been more recent for me. Um, my sister is actually, this is a very like circular answer. I'm sorry about yeah. that. It's a good, it's a good goal. You, <laughs> you have to, no, no, you have I'm to tell me everything. I'm gonna tell you as much as I can yeah, about my Yeah, sure, sure, but, yeah. But my sister actually has, is labeled as having a disability. Oh. And so Best Buddies organization really spoke to me as well. It, because if you're not aware of what Best Buddies is, they create opportunities for people who have disabilities okay. as well fostering like leadership development and one-on-one -on -one friendships. And all right. of that is so important to me because I've seen my sister go through life with a disability. Yeah. And through all of that, like all that volunteer work, the only thing that really mattered to me at the end of the day were those people. Okay. It wasn't... It wasn't anything else. It was those conversations, getting to know them, getting to be with them that just yeah. truly made me feel happy. And hopefully I left them feeling happy too. Yeah. And so that's where it really started originating. I started reflecting about it and I said, oh, okay. Well, if I had to sum up everything that I believe in, everything I want to become, it's love. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, this is really weird. I'll tell you why, but I just really would like to honor your heart because, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that said that God did not come to judge the world, but to save and seek the lost. And, you know, the heart of God is to really, you know, take care of people, his desires to love people. And I feel like you have that heart. So I just really want to honor that, Shivali, because not everyone has that. And uh, people do advocacies just because they want to feel good. Yes, it does feel good, but it seems to me that you have a very personal reason and you summed it up with all of your experiences with love. And it's really important nowadays. And if you don't have that core, which is love, I don't think you're gonna, I think you're gonna pass out with all of that work. <laughs> at, least it, <laughs> at least it comes naturally within reason, right? So. You know, it's so funny before we continue because I was praying to God like, Lord, lead me to the right questions for this beautiful woman. And all of these questions was about love. And here we are. Question number three. What is your definition of love? Uh, that's amazing. You yeah. Guys, just, it, it all aligns, right? It's, yeah. this, one, this interview was meant to happen. It, exactly, and yeah. I, I truly believe that God places us in positions where we can meet people right and, and i think it's with intent yeah so i think this was meant to happen <laughs> definitely yeah so yeah but your definition my, of love yeah my definition of love is just acceptance it's love is in the small things yeah. love is service love is acting for someone else it's accepting someone for all of who they are whether it's yeah. their strength or their flaws or the weaknesses because Everybody has their flaws, right? And nobody is perfect, right. but it really comes down to whether you can accept all of who they are. Yeah. So love to me is just simply being who you are and accepting all that the other people are, all that other people are. That is so deep. I'm so inspired by you right now, Shivali. <laughs> Like, um, did you did you ever wonder that you'd come to this point and operate in in such a strong foundation which is love did you ever realize that when you were young or did you ever expect that you would come to this point no i didn't i i think i've had my own setbacks as everyone has yeah. I've, and those setbacks have really i've made sure that I've used them to propel me forward yeah. instead of holding me back. And that's so important. I hope that anybody who's watching this would right. take up the same message. It's don't ever let something else define you, whether it's one moment, you don't want five moments of a day to ruin your whole day. Same way right. you don't want a moment in your life to ruin your whole life. Yeah. So just keep it, keep staying true to yourself. You're the only person who knows you. You're the yeah. only person who's spent every living moment with yourself. So Define yourself according to your heart and your own values, and that is it. Not 
to anybody else. And for me, I definitely did not see myself being here, but I'm so glad that I am. Yeah, and um, I just like to say that uh, you're the only candidate that I ever interviewed that said something like that, that your foundation is love. Like, I've heard it several times that they're operating in love, but it's only you that I've heard saying that I am rooted in love and the foundation of what I'm doing is actually love. And just really want to honor that, Shivali. And yeah, I'm always available. Okay, if you want to talk about love, the love of God, I'm always here. So <laughs> Yes, I, I love speaking with you. I mean, I feel like we've connected very naturally and I love yeah. that for us. Thank so you. we'll definitely have to stay in touch after this too. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So number four. Okay. So if you were to ask God one question, what would you ask him or what would you say? What is the best way that I can be a true servant and child of God? Mm. I think that would be the question I would want to ask because we're all searching for purpose, right? Yeah. We, we're all curious about where it all originated. Yeah. How did life come about? Yeah. And then who created God? Yeah. And what is the purpose of it all? But it's also really about what is the best way that I can serve? Yeah. And what is the most that I can contribute in the most powerful, amplified way? And so I think really getting to ask that question would really be about purpose. But it would also be about, am I fully using the talents that God has poured into me? Yeah. Well, I just would like to like, you know, the Lord impressed into my heart that you're actually doing it already. It's just that I feel like it is, a, you are in a season right now where the Lord is really inviting you to have an intimate relationship with Him because you already know your purpose. And I feel like that purpose was rooted and planted in you. Because the Lord knows that it's what's, yeah, that's what's in your heart. So don't worry about amplifying um, your cause or your purpose because you're actually doing it, Shivali. And those questions that you had in your head and in your heart, actually, the Lord knows that. And you know what's so amazing about God is that He brings about the heart of confession. So we have grown up, before I become, became a born-again Christian, we grew up that we couldn't talk to God, that, you know, it's so distant. But while studying the Bible, I learned that God really wants to communicate with us and He just wants to bring about the heart of confession. So with what you have said, know that the Lord knows it and He's encouraging you to speak to Him about it so, so that all the things that would fl flow from your heart would come out naturally. So very For good, sure. Kivali. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I fully agree with you. I think in a lot of ways, sometimes when we have those questions, God yeah. affirms it in yeah. whatever way it is. Sometimes it's external. Sometimes you have an idea and you think, oh my gosh, that answers the question. And it's really, sometimes that's God planting the idea in your head. Yeah. But yeah, for me, it's, I think when I ask that question, it's not so much just about Amplified Impact. It's making sure that I'm doing the most I can, or if there's a way to encourage even more that I can give. Yeah, it's like it's like allowing the glory of God to be manifested in you. And that is just really his desire. So later I'll pray for you, Shivali. So number five, if there's anything in the world that you want to change today, what would it be and why? I think it's important that we foster more inclusivity. Okay. Because there's a lot of prejudice and bigotry and discrimination and right, right, right. Even, uh, lack of opportunity and equality in certain places. I mean, even with my platform of working with people who have disabilities, they don't fully always have the ability to be courageous right. as they go through life or have the equal opportunities mm -hmm. um, or be in the same classrooms even. Yeah. Uh, and so there's there's just a little bit of dissonance between those ideas. So I think it would be wonderful if there was more inclusivity and to sort of hone in on that idea. I think it's important we really, if I could change anything with the world, it would be to change the education system so that all of those ideas get addressed very early so that when yeah. you're growing older, they're already ingrained in you. Yeah. The idea of, okay, it's it's, normal that other people will look different than you or be different than you right. but that's still accepting we all bleed the same color yeah i agree with that i agree i couldn't say anything more but you said it really correctly so okay number six i love how the interview is going so do you believe okay here it's about love again 
the Lord revealed this question to me. So, do you believe that true love still exists in the world today? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, we're all just trying to be happy. I don't think anybody goes out of their way to be upset or output any sort of negative energy. So I do think true love exists. I think we're all sort of looking for it, but it can be found in the most simple of places. And we need to remember that it's not only within us, we have true love within us, but we also have it amongst the people that we are close with. Yeah. And you can find it anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. We just You're so look charming. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when you said it, you were so charming. So <laughs> okay, so okay, we're down to the second to the last question. Now, this is a pageant related question. So okay. but before we go there, I just really because our interview is so short. Um, what do you do for fun? I like to be different. Like I I don't like to be boxed in. Okay. So I like to learn new cultures, new languages, new skill right. sets. Yeah. I played piano for 12 years mm -hmm. and I am now sort of trying to pick up the ukulele. Oh. But and of course I still practice the piano, but I'm trying to learn the ukulele. I have it with me, but I'm not going to play anything for you because I <laughs> suck at it. <laughs> right now but hopefully <laughs> that's not for long and by next year i will be an expert <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe you could use that as a talent for miss supernational yeah i think right? have a talent yeah. portion yeah so they do have a talent portion so what are you what are you presenting for the talent portion so i will be performing a dance oh i'm keeping the details of that dance a well-kept secret but i oh, will okay. be sharing it on social media yeah do send me a copy yeah so i could post it in oh my for, sure. for sure yeah yeah so <laughs> if, if what is that one thing that most of your closest friends do not know about you do not know about you my closest friends do not yeah know about me. yeah that's really difficult though because i'm a very transparent person like okay. i I don't think there's really anything I can think of that I've hidden from them. <laughs> I really know everything. I'm just, I say what's on my mind usually. Okay. If it's whatever comes here, it's out my mouth in the next second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so favorite food? Favorite food, uh, pizza. Oh, pizza. I love pizza. Yes. Can you come it's to the Philippines and we're gonna have pizza or I'll go there to the US, yeah? We also had a conversation about bubble tea, so we need like yeah, yeah, yeah. Butter, but like long enough time to hang out where we can have the bubble tea and the pizza. Yeah, I love pizza. And I can bring you some uh, shrikan. shrikan. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, we talked yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So before we go to the serious question, like, um, what else? Do you cook? A little bit. Yeah. Um, my parents would probably beg to differ, but. <laughs> I am very good at following internet directions, okay. so I'm practically a A1 cook. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I cook things, but just when I want to explore other cuisines, it's definitely uh, Google is my friend, my best yeah. friend. Well, you can research every, uh, you know, all the kinds of recipes that there is, no? except right? for the traditional ones, you really have to have the heart for it. like. I say I'm a Filipino, so we love adobo. I'm not sure if you've tried it. Do you have Fili Do you have Filipino friends there in the U.S.? No. I have some friends, uh, but I've never had Philippine food. You should try. Yeah, if you see okay. your Filipino friends, you should force them to like prepare you. Okay. Especially I will... lum the lumpia and the Filipino spaghetti. <laughs> you should try. Well, I'm vegetarian, so oh. is there food for vegetarians? There is a, a vegetarian lumpia. We have the vegetable lumpia. So there should be like a wrap that's made of a vegan wrapper. You could just request for a vegan wrapper. So yeah, oh, interestingly, so Miss Supra Canada. Hi, Sasha. You're going to meet, to meet her soon. <laughs> she loves Filipino food too. So, um, and she's also Sasha, eating- Miss Supernatural Super, Canada. Right? Yeah, Sasha Lombardi, no, yeah. We just had a small conversation like I- we messaged, so I'm yeah, excited. So to I'm gonna tell her that we chatted. I actually told her that we were, we're chatting today. So she loves Philippine Filipino food, and she's eating clean. So she may have an alternative to the wrapper, because like our wrappers, I don't think it's vegan, but I think there really is an option. So we'll see okay. about that. So uh, after <laughs> one last um, slum book uh, question: What is your ideal man? My ideal man. Yeah. I mean, I don't really have 
expectations per se right, of right. like a list but just somebody who would be accepting of my family because i know my sister is always going to be around for me okay. and so somebody yeah. who's accepting of that but also is uh kind and intelligent and has ambitions of his own okay is are you the eldest sister or you're the youngest? I'm, yo i'm younger so my sister is nine years older than me but she's very much like a younger sister to me okay okay yeah yeah of course okay so we're down to the second to the last of the questions that i prepared what are your expectations at the miss supranational 2021 pageant knowing that it got postponed like several times already but i already had an idea that's going to be coming in august long before it was announced so yeah what are you expecting aside from the fact it's going to be cold in uh, poland <laughs> um first of all i hope not because my wardrobe i've been putting together is <laughs> definitely not for the cold but what i've heard is that it is around like 56 to 70 degrees so i'm okay. hoping that you are wrong <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, so I, my expectations for Miss Supernational, I know that we're taking great precautions because yeah. I'm actually supposed to fly into Krakow mm -hmm. in Poland and then quarantine for a couple days and get yeah. tested. Okay. So I think that will really help the girls and the staff and everybody who's visiting to make sure that there's good safety precautions for COVID. Yeah. But outside of that, I am... 100% belief, I have 100% belief in the team to put on an amazing production. I think right. all the women, uh, I've talked to a few of them, they're all super inspiring, intelligent, wonderful women. And I'm very excited to meet them. As far as personal expectations, I of course would love to become the next Miss Supranational 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will be putting forward my best foot. Okay. And that is the only expectation I hold of myself. Okay. Yeah, that is very, yeah. You know what, we're going to talk afterwards, okay? So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very speechless. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here's the golden question. Um, the last question for this interview. Why do you want to win the Miss Supernational 2021 title? For lots of reasons. Miss okay. Supernational 2021 is a job unlike any other. Right. I have always, well, first of all, my background in pageantry is for 20 years Ooh. and so i think with being in pageantry for as long as i have yeah you really understand the work ethic that is yeah. required for a job like miss super national 2021 and so for me to want to become a super super national 2021 it's not just about uh winning a title or an international title but it's also about representation it's also about um bringing light to the issues that needed. I think we're in unprecedented times with the pandemic happening. And yeah. there are many, many, many causes that I'm passionate about. But of course, I would love to move forward, especially work with people who have disabilities, providing more opportunities, more uh, equal ground for them to really live their life with courage, comfortability, and equality. And that goes for regardless anybody anybody regardless what their gender is what their socioeconomic background is whether ability or disability yeah and i would just love the opportunity to move that forward if you didn't know there's i believe 61 million adults in the united states who have a disability and mm. nearly 1 billion people in the world who have a disability oh. so that's a lot of people who are who don't have that same um, access to everything yeah. yeah right so I, agree. I, I would love to use the platform of the supranational 2021 to move forward causes that need the attention especially my work with people with disabilities right so like um you've mentioned earlier before we end that you have been in the pageant industry for 20 years how young are you now so i'm 24 I started when I was five. Okay. <laughs> um, so almost exactly 20 years, not fully 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I started off doing like the natural pageants. Right. My mom got a brochure in the mail <laughs> and she was working three jobs. My dad was working two jobs at the time and they thought it would be a great bonding experience. Right. And I ended up winning that first okay. pageant. 
<laughs> so after that, they were like, oh my gosh, completely hooked. I was hooked because of the self-development opportunity. I loved being on stage. I was totally a limelight kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it sort of just evolved into bigger dreams of representing the United States at an international, wanting to uh, use an international platform to really put my heart and be of service to the world, the community. Yeah. So Mr. International is your first international pageant. Yes. Okay, but yeah. Way. yeah. Okay, so wow, I feel like you've you're really born for this. You were, you know, this is a God ordained ambition, yeah. God ordained task, and I feel like you're such a natural uh, Shivali, and you're coming to full circle with Mr. International. And if it's not Mr. International, I'm sure there'll be something else, you know, of the same equal level and platform. So Shivali. Um, I think, is this your first interview with a Filipino vlogger? If not, do it you... It is. It is. Oh, wow. Such an honor. Yay. So, um, I should post this right away. So, anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no one else I would rather have a first Philippines vlog with than you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Shivali, do you have any messages to your Filipino fans and soon to be Filipino um, ad admirers at the, for in this coming Mr. International pageant. Yeah. How do I say thank you and I love you in Filipino? Yes. Okay. In Filipino, thank you is maraming marami salamat. Salamat. Yeah. Maraming marami salamat. salamat. Yes. I mean, thank you. Thank you. And then I love you is mahal kita. Ma mahal kita. Yeah. Mahal kita. Okay, yes. so Marumi. Marami. <laughs> Marami. Salu. Salamat. Salamat. Okay, sorry, yeah. this will take me a second. Okay, Marami. it's okay. Salamat. Yeah. Marami salamat and Mahal. Mahal. Kita. Kita. Mahal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, well, that is my message to my <laughs> fans because it's thank you and I, I love, love you. you. I'm so grateful for all the support and I truly 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 hope that you guys reach out because I would love to get to interact with you and talk to you and get to know you too so DM me and make sure that are you posting this on YouTube I'm posting this on uh, Instagram and on YouTube yeah okay well if you're watching this on YouTube be sure to like share and subscribe to his channel <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Shivali, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm so happy that I covered the North American region. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again for asking and having me on. It really yeah, means a lot. Yes, and thank you for Govin for hooking us up. It was actually Govin too who actually hooked me and Sasha together. So I'm yeah, so happy that very very thoughtful guy very wonderful hi Govin thank you so much and yeah. yeah guys so make sure to follow like and subscribe to all of my social media accounts including Shivali's Instagram and yeah stay tuned for another episode of pageant talks with Gian Lasala or with me Gian Lasala season 2 and there will be more special episodes coming up soon very soon in the future so bye